Okay, folks. Um, just some announcements. Um, today, when you leave, I have your lab information, group information from yesterday. There are two piles. One of them at the top says 1050. The other one at the top says that it is um, 240. Please pick those up as you but as you leave today. The other things that are up here are directly related to the service learning project. Uh, if you look at your service learning grade, you not only get a grade for doing the actual work, but there is a five point, there's five points allocated to your teams. Uh, opinion as to how much work we've been doing associated with the group. Um, you can pick up this page and you will just write in your team member's name and then read the directions that you'll circle how many points you think they should be awarded. And there's also places for comments. If you award somebody a low score, please comment why. Now, one of the reasons, I mean, one of the reasons I created the group me is number one, I can see if somebody hasn't been communicating. Uh, number two, the reason I created the Google folder and the Google Doc is because I can look back and see who has and who hasn't been contributing. And so, but at the same time, there are things that go on that I'm unaware of. And this would be an opportunity for you to tell me what's going on. The other one is a personal reflection. And it's the one that looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, in each puzzle piece, there is a question. Obviously, each puzzle piece, there isn't a whole lot of space. So in other words, I'm wanting you to be concise. I'm not wanting a lengthy explanation. I'm wanting concise explanations. And so I'm not looking for a, uh, a lot of verbiage, but I am looking for you to reflect on the service learning project. So again, these can be picked up. Now they're not due until, I think they're due, the week of your fourth exam, if I recall. So basically they're not due until the, very, the bitter end, but they have to be turned in by the fourth exam in order for me to be able to let you know where you stand in this class so that you can make an educated decision as to whether or not you're going to come and take the final exam or whether that's going to be the exam you are dropping. So, um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another poll, even though I know we're missing some of your classmates. I am going to take another poll and I'm going to tell you about the poll today and take it on Monday. That way you have time to consider it 
before you have to give me a response. This particular poll is going to be probably related to how much, how many projects you have due the week before finals, how many, uh, how many other things, exams you have due the week before finals, and stuff like that. So right now, I have it set up for you to do to demonstrate your activities. But I realized that it is the week before finals during lab. And I don't know how intense your week before finals are. So you have two choices. We either do the demonstration or we don't do the demonstration. If we do the demonstration, we're going to meet the week in lab the week before finals. If we don't do the demonstration, then you're going to have that time that you can study for your finals or put together a paper that may be due that Thursday or something like that. So again, I want you to review your own schedule. Make an educated decision. I mean, this is the, the demonstration piece is probably going to be fun. But at the same time, I don't want it to interfere with a high, highly packed week. So I want you to make an educated decision. Yes. Are there points that are associated with the demonstration? There are, but if if it'll be a lot like the, I believe the main points that are associated, there may be points associated with it, but you're not going to lose those points. I would just make the, I, I would basically take what you got out of, I think it's 85, and do a calculation to say what would it be out of 100. So in other words, you're not gonna it's you're not gonna lose a grade or your grade shouldn't be worse because of not if we don't do the demo. I will work accordingly, basically. But I need you to make an educated decision. So that's why you get to know what the question is today, and then you have until Monday to make a decision. Because Monday I'll ask in class. Hopefully that seems reasonable to you. Any questions? Okay. If not, you see, I figured out my problem. I could actually record again so that you actually have it when you're trying to study, which is actually a good thing because weak acid and weak base titrations are going to be more difficult than strong acid, strong base titrations. Now, as I, as, uh, one more reminder, while I, before I get started into this material, and that is Dr. Yang will be here on Friday. He will be going over weak base titration. I've already given him my worked out problems, not that I needed to work it out for him because he does it all the time, but at the same time, that way, hopefully his methods will be similar to mine, but he will not be recording. He does not do that. So you're either here or you miss the information and can only get it from your classmates. Okay, any questions? Any questions at all? And your lab's due on Friday. He'll put them in my mailbox. Your titration lab, not the lab we did yesterday. The titration lab is due tomorrow, uh, Friday. Trying to keep up with y'all. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start the, the way today is going to work, the very first problem I'm going to do is a lot like question number one on your post lab 
from the titration lab. Um, and I am actually going to use the reaction that you did in lab, which is hydrogen tartrate reacts with sodium hydroxide, and that goes to make sodium tartrate and water. Um, let's say that you used 16.45 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to reach the end point for the titration. Question number one ask, what is the molarity? So you're going to take that 16.45 milliliters of sodium hydroxide and convert it into liters of sodium hydroxide with the fact that 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. You're then going to convert that volume of sodium hydroxide into moles of sodium hydroxide using the molarity that you recorded, which I am saying is 0 0.04566 molar. So that's moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter. You will then use the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of sodium hydroxide into moles of hydrogen tartrate. And the balanced chemical equation has it in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, Question number one ask you for the molarity of your hydrogen tartrate. You have what we have done so far is we have performed a conversion necessary to convert this into moles of hydrogen tartrate. But when it asks for molarity, it is wanting moles over liters. Well, in the laboratory, you used a 25 milliliter volumetric pipette. And therefore we would divide this by 0 0.02500 liters of um, hydrogen tartrate solution and that would give you your molarity. And completing this, that for me, that was 0 0.0300 molar. I want to say that yours probably comes out around 0 0.02 something. But um, again, these are just made up numbers. You'll have to use the data that you collected and the molarity on the bottle that you used in order to get the correct answer. You will do this twice, one for run one and once for run two. And then you will take the average in part B of that question, I believe it is. Questions? about how to get to the molarity of hydrogen tartrate. Okay, now I'm actually going to do a problem that is not the same, exact same problem, but it is similar enough. And I'll tell you where your lab overlaps with this type of problem so that you can go back and work the problem in your laboratory uh, but with your data. Okay, so um, the problem that we're going to work today is a weak acid strong base titration. The first question 
is what volume of sodium hydride of um, 0 0.3 molar sodium hydroxide is needed to reach the equivalence point in for a titration of 25 milliliters of 0 0.3 molar sodium hydroxide. Folks, this question is basically what you did in college chemistry one. We are, to, uh, whoops, that's not sodium hydroxide. That was HF. Okay, so the reaction we are studying is sodium hydroxide reacts with HF to form water plus sodium fluoride. Now, we started out with 25 milliliters of our HF. There's a thousand milliliters in one liter of HF. Hydrofluoric acid has a molarity of 0 0.3 molar. So that's 0 0.3 moles of HF per one liter of solution. The HF can be canceled out with the sodium hydroxide using the multiple ratio. So for every one mole of HF, you have one mole of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide has a concentration of 0 0.3 moles of sodium hydroxide to one liter. And there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So when we calculate this out, you will find that you need to use 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide in order to reach the equivalence point. Any questions? This again is something you should have learned in college chemistry one, is molarity conversions. Okay. Next, we're going to look at what is the pH after the addition of zero? 0 0.00 milliliters of sodium hydroxide ten point zero zero milliliters of sodium hydroxide twelve point five milliliters of sodium hydroxide 
25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. and 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. The reason we did question number one is to give us an idea of what type of problem is going to be associated with each of these steps in the titration. Twenty five milliliters is our equivalence point. As we are going to see, since we're dealing with a weak acid, that means we're going to be dealing with a conjugate base calculation. On your lab, when we get to this point, this is going to be associated with questions four and five when I get to that point. Now at zero milliliters, that means all we have is a weak acid. This is going to be like question three on your lab. At 10 milliliters and 12.5 milliliters, we're going to be in the buffer region. Buffers come back here. Now, this 12.5 though is going to be especially nice because it's the half equivalence point. And I'll show you what that means when we get there. And then past that, we're going to, past the equivalence point, we're gonna have excess strong base. So we're going to have a strong base calculation. I'm going to show you each of these as we go. But basically, folks, I couldn't have teased out what each step was if I did not do that conversion to begin with. Okay, so let's look at B. In B, I said all we have is weak acid because we haven't added any base. So what we have in solution is we have HF, and water, that's going to set up an equilibrium to make F minus and hydronium. Folks, you already have in your toolkit the ability to do this type of problem because you were tested on it. This is a weak acid problem. We have a concentration of 0 0.3 molar HF, none of our fluoride, none of our hydronium. As time progresses, we lose X amount of the hydrofluoric acid because it's a weak acid. 
we make X amount of fluoride and X amount of hydronium so that at equilibrium, we have 0 0.3 minus X of our hydrofluoric acid, we have X of our fluoride and we have X of our hydronium. Because this is a weak acid, we can write a Ka expression. The Ka is going to be equal to the fluoride concentration times the hydronium concentration all divided by the hydrofluoric acid concentration. The Ka for hydrofluoric acid can be looked up at 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus four. That's going to be equal to X times X all over the 0 0.3 minus X. Multiplying through by our denominator, we get 1.98 times 10 to the minus four minus 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus four times X is equal to X squared. Rearranging to set this equal to zero, zero is equal to X squared plus 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus four times X minus 1.98 times 10 to the minus four. Using your quadratic equation to solve for X, which is equal to the hydronium concentration, X comes out to be equal to 0 0.0137 molar. Taking the pH of that, pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium. which is equal to the negative log of 0 0.0137, or in other words, the pH comes out to be 1.86. Again, you already had this problem in your toolkit. This is a weak acid problem. There is nothing else going on at that point except the presence of weak acid. Okay, any questions? Again, that is how you work problem three on your post lab if you haven't already. I know a lot of you were doing that yesterday in lab. Okay, so the next step is 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Because we're adding two solutions, what do we have to do? We have to do a dilution. Two solutions means dilution. So we have HF concentration. That is 25 milliliters of 0 0.3 molar divided by 35 milliliters overall, which gives us a molarity of 0 0.214 molar. We do the same with our sodium hydroxide. That is 10 milliliters times 0 0.3 molar divided by 35 milliliters, which gives us a value of 0 0.0857 molar. Now, because we've added sodium hydroxide, the reaction we are looking at is, sodium, is hydrofluoric acid plus sodium hydroxide goes to make sodium fluoride plus water. We started out with 0 0.214 of our hydrofluoric acid and 0 0.0857 of our sodium hydroxide. Because we have the presence of a strong base, reaction goes to completion. So we're going to use up 0 0.0857 of our hydrofluoric acid 
we're going to use up 0 0.0857 of our sodium hydroxide, and we are going to make 0 0.0857 of our sodium fluoride. Folks, this is the step that is different than what we have been doing. This is the step that is different than what we have been doing because we're dealing with a weak acid. We can't ignore the formation of the conjugate base. When we were doing titrations of strong acids, strong bases, I ignored that product side because it wasn't going to play a role in my calculation. But you cannot ignore the product side for a weak acid titration. You have to pay attention to it. So we have 0 0.1283 of our hydrofluoric acid. We have none of our sodium hydroxide. We have 0 0.0857 of our sodium fluoride. Now, what you will notice is we have hydrofluoric acid and we have sodium fluoride. This is a conjugate acid-base pair. And we have concentrations of the conjugate acid-base pair. So again, this is a buffer region. So we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Is pH. Where is my pen? pH equals pKa. Plus the log. Of the base. Over the acid. So before we can do that, we need the pKa. pKa, just like any P, is equal to the negative log of, in this case, the Ka. So it's pKa is equal to the negative log of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. So the pKa equals um, 3.18. Now we can do our, we can use that for our buffer calculation. So our pH is equal to 3.18 plus the log of the base, which is going to be the 0 0.0857 over the acid, which is 0 0.1283. So our pH comes out to be equal to 3.00. Okay, the next one was 12.50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Folks, as I mentioned, this is a special one because it is halfway to the equivalence point of a weak acid Strong base titration. You can prove this if you so desire using the same technique that we did in the previous question. But the fact is, if it is the half equivalence point, then the pH is simply equal to the pKa. And the reason for that is because the concentration of the acid and the concentration of the conjugate base will be equivalent. And therefore, that log piece of the Henderson-Hasselbalch will cancel out. So in other words, our pH is equal to 3.18 at the 12.50 milliliter mark.
Again, you can prove it to yourself using the techniques that we did in the previous part of the problem. But what you're going to see is that log base over acid comes out to be equal to zero. So the pH becomes pKa. Okay. The next one, 25 milliliters, is at the equivalence point. We're adding two solutions, so what does that mean? Dilution. So we have 25 milliliters of our HF. That is 0 0.3 molar divided by a total of 50 milliliters. And for our sodium hydroxide, we have 25 milliliters of 0 0.3 molar diluted to 50 milliliters. When you calculate this out, you get 0 0.15 molar for both the acid and for the base. Now, the reaction, because we are adding acid to base, is that the HF is going to be added to sodium hydroxide to make sodium fluoride and water. We start out with 0 0.15 molar of our acid and 0 0.15 molar of our strong base and none of the conjugate base. Because strong base is involved, the reaction goes to completion until the one in the lowest demand supply is used up. In this case, it uses up both the weak acid and the strong base. So all that is left is the conjugate base. This portion is what you needed in order to solve for question number four on the lab. Now, if you look here, what we have is we have conjugate base. We have conjugate is it strong base or is it weak base? Your strong bases are group one hydroxides, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Is it one of those? Then it's a weak base. Now, I'm not going to worry about the sodium because the sodium is inconsequential. It's a it's a spectator ion, it doesn't actually play a role. What does play a role is you have F minus reacting with water to form HF plus hydroxide. You have 0 0.15 molar of the fluoride. You have none of your hydrofluoric acid and none of your hydroxide. Because this is a weak base, the HF, I mean, sorry, the F minus is going to react minus X to form X amount of hydrofluoric acid and X amount of hydroxide. So at equilibrium, you have 0 0.15 minus X of the fluoride, you have X of the hydrofluoric acid, and you have X of the hydroxide. This, folks, in other words, is a weak base calculation. Well, if it's a weak base calculation, then the KB is going to be equal to the HF times the hydroxide all over the F minus. Now, the first thing we need is we need KB. Well, KW is equal to KA times KB. 
Or in other words, one times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus four times KB. The KB for this, therefore, is equal to 1.52 times 10 to the minus 11. Plugging that in, 1.52 times 10 to the minus 11 is equal to x times x all over um, 0 0.15 minus x. Multiplying through by our denominator, we get 2.27 times 10 to the minus 12 minus 1.52 times 10 to the minus 11 times x is equal to x squared. Rearranging the equation to set it equal to zero, zero is equal to x squared plus 1.52 times 10 to the minus 11 times x minus 2.27 times 10 to the minus 12. Solving for x, which is equal to, according to the balanced chemical equation, our hydroxide concentration, x comes out to be equal to 1.51 times 10 to the minus six. From there, we can get our POH. POH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide, which is equal to the negative log of 1.51 times 10 to the minus six, which is equal to the negative, uh, which is equal to, whoops, of 5.82. And finally, we can get our pH because pH is equal to 14 minus pOH, which is equal to 14 minus 5.82, or in other words, it's 8.18. All of this is what is needed for question five. So let me just recap. When I hit the equivalence point, because I added solutions, I did a dilution. But what I found out is that that titration used up all of the reactants and all you had left were products. And the product of importance is that conjugate base. But this still takes place in water. Every, all these reactions still take place in water. So yes, you have conjugate base, but you have conjugate base that's reacting with that water. And so you wind up having to do a weak base calculation in order to get to your pH. The last part of the titration is that we had 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Again, because we're doing a dilution, we have to, or because we're adding two solutions, we have to do a dilution. For our HF concentration, that is 25 milliliters times 0 0.3 molar, all over a total of 55 milliliters. And for our sodium hydroxide, that is going to be 30 milliliters times 0 0.3 molar, all over 55 milliliters. When you do this, you get 0 0.136 molar 
of our sodium hydroxide and we get 0 0.164 molar of our, I'm sorry, 0 0.136 molar of our hydrofluoric acid and 0 0.164 molar of sodium hydroxide. The reaction is HF plus sodium hydroxide goes to make sodium fluoride plus water. You have 0 0.136 of your hydrofluoric acid, 0 0.164 of your sodium hydroxide, and none of your conjugate base. Because there is a strong base involved, the reaction is going to go until somebody gets used up. In this case, that somebody is the hydrofluoric acid. So we use up all of the hydrofluoric acid. We wind up with 0 0.028 of our sodium hydroxide and 0 0.136 of our conjugate base. Now the fact is folks, you've got a strong base and you got a weak base. Who do you think is going to be more important, the strong base or the weak base? Strong. So we're not worried in this particular case about the weak base because it is inconsequential compared to that strong base. So we're going to worry about the strong base. Well, that sodium hydroxide is going to dissociate to form sodium ion and hydroxide ion. We have 0 0.028 of the sodium hydroxide, none of the sodium ion and none of the hydroxide ion. But sodium hydroxide being a strong base is going to dissociate entirely to form the ions. So you really don't have sodium hydroxide. You have sodium ion and you have hydroxide ion. From that hydroxide ion, we can get our pOH. Our pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide, which is equal to the negative log of 0 0.028 or 1.55. Finally, we can get the fact that uh, pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH. So that is equal to 14 minus 1.55, or in other words, the pH at the 30 mil mark is 12.45. Now, if we were to graph this, What we would see, and let me get the, at our zero mil mark, the pH was 1.86. At, it quickly climbed to the 10 mil mark, it was at three even. At 12.5, it was 3.18. At the 25 mil mark, it jumped to 8.18. And at the 30 mil mark, it jumped to 12.45. Uh, now, what you would see if I connect the dots is that you would have something like this. Now, the main point is that this region is a buffer region. And the area surrounding the equivalence point 
is not as dynamic as it is for a strong acid titration. And this is actually a pretty strong acid for a weak acid, but it's depending upon the strength of the acid that this gap here is going to get even more narrow. So depending upon the strength of the weak acid. Welcome to titrations of weak acids. Dr. Yang will do a titration of a weak base. So you'll get to see a lot of the same type of calculations, but it'll be for a weak base instead of a weak acid. 